We're getting information now over a pretty serious incident that occurred at Solid Rock Church. Of course, this is the church of Pastor John Paul Miller, who has been all over the news headlines for the better part of five weeks now at this point. And, well, what went down here at the church, again, very concerning. Um, and I'm going to give you my take on really what I think needs to be done, because um, if it doesn't get done, I'm worried that there could be multiple people that get hurt with this. Uh, we'll dive in and talk about it here in just a second. Welcome, everybody, to Not By Sight News. Yes, a blind Christian guy here reporting to you, reminding you, as always, that we walk by faith, not by sight. For someone like me, that's kind of my only option. Speaking of that, for those interested, you want to know my story. How did I go blind? How do I operate my entire ministry without being able to see? Well, I made a video that explains it all. You'll find a link to that in the description section of all my videos. And if you really enjoy and appreciate the work that I do here and you would like to contribute with a donation, you can help me out by one, simply hitting the super thanks button on the YT video here, or you can join my Patreon for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash notbysightnews, link in the description. Hey, you want to get access to all of these videos before they hit the main YT platform? Well, when you sign up to Patreon, that is exactly what you are going to get, along with a bunch of other cool features that Patreon has to offer I hope you'll check me out over there. Again, patreon.com slash notbysightnews. Big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. Let's dive into this. Now, uh, it was just a couple of days ago, of course, that J.P. Miller gave that impromptu interview, that little Q&A that he had with Justin on TikTok. And this was the same interview where... You know, JP had said that, well, he wouldn't really do the interview if, you know, Robbie Harvey was there. And of course, there's an ongoing legal dispute between Harvey and JP. And so, you know, Justin had asked Robbie, you know, to, you know, to get off the call so that way he could go ahead and uh, continue talking here with JP. And JP, you know, he, he answered some questions, you know, those that were going on in the live chat. Then you had Justin on TikTok, who was also asking him some questions as well. He asked him about the necklace that he was wearing and if in fact that was Micah's necklace and JP had told him that it was and he had got it from the nurse at the hospital uh, that following day after she died, which would have been on um, April 28th. Uh, but JP also in that little Q&A talked about how he had some proof that was coming soon, like proof that he didn't have anything to do with this or you know, proof that he knew uh, potentially more about what happened with the situation, uh, an affidavit potentially coming out with this. So he wouldn't really go into much more detail other than that, but that also he himself wanted justice for Micah. Of course, the hashtag that's been going around now ever since her unfortunate death. Now we have this, now this is, huh, I'll tell you what, this is worrisome to me and I'll, I'll tell you why here in just a second. Now, Getting back to the interview that Justin on TikTok did with JP, the two of them had talked about exchanging phone numbers and potentially uh, doing another interview very soon, uh, one that would be more scheduled and not impromptu. And Justin on TikTok recently, you know, this was on Sunday, June 2nd, that in fact, JP Miller had reached out to him. So they did in fact exchange numbers. And what JP revealed to Justin was that an incident took place at Solid Rock Church on Sunday, June 2nd. Now, ever since Micah's death, you have to understand, there have been protesters that have been outside of Solid Rock. There was a lot of them on uh, their Sunday, May 5th service. That was the day that they had the memorial service for Micah. But ever since then, there has been a lot more that have shown up, you know, wanting justice for Micah, rightfully so. Many of them are not happy with JP, with all the news that's come out about him. Uh, and then on top of that, of course, you have th the attendance at Solid Rock has just dropped to crazy low levels. I think last I saw was 30 people. I believe that was at their Mother's Day service. Now, I don't know how many people were in attendance for the Sunday, June 2nd service. However, according to Justin... JP reached out to him 
and said that there was an incident that went down with the church involving a protester. Now, this is apparently somebody that in this protester who has caused problems before. I guess according to, and again, these are all, this is all coming from JP who fed this information to Justin. And Justin's relaying the information. It was in a video that he did, which by the way, I will put a link to that video here in the description of my video. And you can go and check that out for yourself after you get done here. But again, this is all according to JP, relaying this to Justin, saying that one of these protesters that showed up at the church on June 2nd was apparently, is apparently a dealer, okay? But not only that, he apparently, like, devised some sort of a scheme to where uh, he was trying to convince older ladies to put him uh, in their will. Just, just really weird. And I, and I know, again, it's all coming from JP. So, again, we're not... We're not making this up. This is, again, you know, JP and Justin, they exchanged phone numbers, and, and, and I'm just reporting to you what's being said through that. So uh, something else happened, though. So in addition to this scheme that he has and him being a dealer, causing problems outside of the church, he apparently did something stupid. This is what Justin said. Uh, whether it was something that he said or something that he threatened, and whatever it was, it was apparently a safety concern for JP. So much so that the police were called out to the church. And, and there's photos of this. And you'll, you'll see those, by the way, in the video that I'll have here in the description from Justin. Uh, not only police, but also police dogs were dispatched there to the church uh, to try and handle the situation. Now... We don't really know what specifically it was that, you know, that happened here at the church. Uh, JP apparently wouldn't go any further than that. Just that his safety was a top priority. Again, something that this protester said in relation to JP, either making a threat of some kind, whatever it may have been, is what prompted police to show up there to the church uh, with the dogs. So... My question is this, because they're talking about the safety for John Paul Miller. To my knowledge, unless I've missed something, and I've been pretty much on top of the story, and not to say that I couldn't have missed something because I am human after all, but if they were concerned for the safety of John Paul Miller, does that mean that JP was in attendance at Solid Rock for the June 2nd service? Was he actually preaching? During the service, was he just maybe in attendance at the church? Was he in his office? Was he somewhere on site? Because again, if the concern was the safety for JP, why are police and these police dogs showing up to the church? Why wouldn't they be showing up to JP's home? Because again, JP was supposed to be on the sabbatical, right? He was taking time away to get healing and counseling. And this is all, again, according to his spiritual mentor, Charles Randall, who, you know, I, I, I don't particularly trust just based off other things that I've reported about him over the last few weeks. So again, where was JP? Was he at the church? Is this the safety concern? Or, because the one thing I didn't hear from this, by the way, was, was there a safety concern for those that were in attendance at the church? Did anybody even attend the service? I mean, these are all the questions I have. Now, if you are somebody that by chance was in the Myrtle Beach area, maybe you attended Solid Rock uh, that morning on June 2nd. Maybe you can provide a little bit more insight as to what in the world went on here. Also, we don't particularly know if this occurred during service times or if this was you know, at a time, you know, after church, whatever. I, I know previously Solid Rock had been running two services. However, I'm doubting that's the case now that they're supposedly down to 30 members. And the fact that JP hasn't been there, I mean, is Charles Randall speaking two sermons to what, 15 people apiece? I mean, I don't know. It just doesn't seem, just doesn't seem right to me. So again, we have, you know, more questions here than answers, but the fact that JP had reached out to Justin on TikTok uh, to let him know about this is very interesting. It, again, it makes me think, JP, he must have been at the church. 
Because again, why would the concern for his safety, his safety, again, just, his, just him, no one else, uh, cause police and these dogs to show up to the church if he wasn't there? So that's my question. Now, Justin also revealed that um, he has been talking again with JP and there may be another interview coming soon. Another one that would be more formal, planned and scheduled, uh, probably one where, you know, Justin would be able to plan this in advance, get the questions that he really wants to ask JP, find out exactly what he will or won't answer. Um, and then, you know, we'll go from there. Of course, also coming up this week, and, and keep it tuned here to the channel because uh, we'll be covering uh, all the details about, you know, the JP affidavit or whatever it is that he has coming out uh, to show this proof that, you know, he wants justice for Micah and that, you know, he didn't have anything to do with this or that he knows individuals that may be related or responsible for what happened. So we'll keep you posted on that again as uh, more developments come of this. Uh, it has been quite the story, that is for sure. And just in kind of in closing here, I just want to encourage everybody to continue to keep uh, Micah Miller's family in your prayers. Of course, uh, Michael, Francis, her father, her uh, all of her sisters, her brother, uh, for God to give them peace and also uh, wisdom in how to navigate these days ahead. I know that uh, also coming up, they're going to be uh, having a scheduled court appearance over Micah's estate. That's going to be uh, that's going to be a real battle for them uh, because you know JP obviously is trying to you know gain the assets and the family is trying to work to get those assets for themselves and, and bringing up the you know obvious uh, restraining order that Micah had put in against JP uh, prior to her death. Remember, she also had served him those divorce papers, uh, so uh, it's going to be a very very difficult process for them. So again, keep them in your prayers. Uh, and of course, I welcome your thoughts on the situation here at Solid Rock uh, down below. Again, if you have any more insight you'd like to provide, is maybe you were somebody that was around the area, maybe you attended the service that day, uh, you can let us know. Uh, and don't forget, again, if you enjoy and you appreciate what I do here and you like to contribute by donating, remember you can hit the super thanks button on the YT video or join the Patreon for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash not by site news. What I want to do right now is something I do on all these videos, and that's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. This is an altar call. I've been doing this on my videos since 2016. No matter what it is that I'm discussing here in the church and exposing the wolves, we always want to give people the opportunity to receive Christ as Savior. So that being said, for anybody watching now, if you are somebody who has not yet received Jesus as Lord and Savior and you would like to do so, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world as he died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin that means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and then jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. The Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. I welcome your thoughts. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.